Welcome to the Seriously Social Podcast with your host, Simone Douglas. Today's guest is Marc-Andre Rubaud. We hope you enjoy the show. Okay, so on today's episode of Seriously Social, the podcast, I'm joined by Marc-Andre Rubaud. Rubo, I was yep, so close. That's cool. Uh, so, Mark, can you give us the Cliff Notes version of how you find yourself on the podcast today? Um, a little while back, um, uh, we, we connected through social media, mm-hmm. and you, you posted this thing about, uh, you know, um, there's always someone on the list that you always want to meet, but you've yeah. never quite um, taken that opportunity. And yeah. I went, I, I wrote the, and I said, I've got to take yeah. the opportunity. And I uh, uh, sent you a, a, a yeah. request to have a chat. Absolutely. And we had a, and we connected and mm. this a while ago and, and we've, I've chatted, uh, chatted and I've come yeah. to some of your networking events. Yeah. And I understand the importance of um, networking. Mm-hmm. It's something that I've discovered later in life rather than mm. early, the importance of it. And, yeah, your network is your net worth. And you never know from, from a conversation what might happen. Absolutely. Uh, with your clients, because you're obviously in business coaching and yep. helping business owners navigate what is a very interesting environment currently. Uh, you know, what – kind of level of pandemic fatigue are people suffering from right now a huge amount mm. i think uh, there's a there's a here interstate overseas people are just had enough mm. now there's always been the two camps you know the people yeah. that connected to the concept that you know the virus is real yeah. and the other people who connected it wasn't real and all that kind of dialogue yeah. but we're all getting caught up in it and i think you know by and large australia did really well early on Yes. And unfortunately, we rested on our laurels, you know, she'll be right, mate, and everything. Yeah. And then we got hit by Delta. And now mm. we found ourselves a year. Back where we started, yeah. really. Yeah. Well, when the rest of the world is, is getting on with, uh, life. with their life, we found ourselves, um, you know, 11 million of us in lockdown, mm. where businesses that, you know, had, did all the right things, they had a cash mm. reserves, yeah. they had everything, you know, uh, you know all the things that you read in the yeah, textbook. Cut so, costs, still yeah, all things the things margin. But how, yeah. how, that money is gone. It is gone, and I think you know one of the challenges, absolutely, and one that I get quite frustrated with is, um, you know, government's response to that is, well, take on some more debt. We'll guarantee you can take on some more debt. Now we all know that, you know, yes, there's such a thing as good debt and bad debt, but this is bad debt, debt to survive. Um, when your business model's not flawed but yeah. the restrictions are breaking your business, it's really difficult. What kind of advice would you give to someone, you know, particularly in the hospitality sector right now here in South Australia around, um, you know, they're trying to decide whether they go for another loan, take on some more debt? Um, the, whole, the whole world is hooked on debt. Yeah. And it's not a it's not a good, yeah, as you said, good hmm. debt and bad debt. But... It, it, you can't flog a dead there. horse, right? Yeah. So there comes a point where, you know, you ask that mm. very specific questions about what should you do. Mm. And that's something that you really need to have a good good look at your finances, mm-hmm. get lots of um, great advice, you know, can you yeah. renegotiate your lease? Yeah. All the things that you've, you you might not have done but you need to do, all yeah. those hardcore conversations. And at some point, you, you know, at the end of that, yeah, it yeah. has to be a return on investment. Mm-hmm. If you can't see a return on investment, either short, medium, or long term, then yeah. you really need to make that decision, you know. Yeah. Um, well, and they're not insignificant numbers for some of these operators too. Like, you know, if you're talking $100,000, you know. Yeah. Um, and let's say, you know, for the normal general public that it gets paid a wage, they go, oh, it's $100,000 paid off over however many years. Um most of these loans are three-year terms, the ones that they're actually making available through the government yeah. scheme. So that's $100,000 pay back over three years. You'd have to have a pretty good business to be able to pull that straight back out, I think. And I think that the key on the fundamental in the um, hospitality yeah. and other industries is the unknowingness. Yeah. It's, if, okay, if you have a... a, a borrow money and you, you've got a plan and you mm-hmm. know exactly, okay, I need to do X, Y, Z, I yeah. need to do this and this. And you can see that, that you know, there's going to be a return for investment. Yeah. It's fine. Great. But at the moment, can you operate? Mm. 
when are you, when is the next lockdown? When is the next variant rocking? Who's yeah. going to be vaccinated? Um, are you cli- uh, are, are you going to be forced to have a uh, you know yeah. uh, vaccinated policies for people to come in? And how many of your clients are not going to want to do that? You know, yeah. and and there's also a, a huge level of fear in some people who don't want to be. Uh, in in spaces with lots of people, yeah, that's it's, true. It's so there's so many complexities mm. that makes those kind of decisions really really challenging. And it kind of creates, like I often say, you know, we're we're building a risk averse society now. So like what we're in right now, our kids, oh. you know, they're not going to go jumping from business to business to business. They're not going to jump from you know job to job. Whereas you know in my generation. Was you know like oh you can have eight careers easy yep. you know it's the land of opportunity you do what you like I think we're going to see a very like stable workforce moving forward because people aren't going to want to risk true and, and you know uh, some of the jobs that the future generation are going to have they're not even created yet yeah very true. and and we've got this entire thing coming out with you know demographics artificial mm. intelligence there's so much in the space yeah this which makes it really hard for business some business to you know. Do I take the long? Do I not take the long? You know? Yeah, exactly. And and it, it for a lot of businesses, unfortunately, it's it's operating with one arm tied behind your back, yeah. mm-hmm. and and I, you know, I would be really reluctant to borrow money um, in that kind of environment yeah. because there's a lot of degree on uncertainty. But having said that, people are always going to have want to go out and have a meal. Mm, people true. always are going to. Um, break bread yeah uh, and because it's a human uh, deep human connection absolutely uh, it's a long established tradition i think know. the challenge is going to be um you know and i talked to some of the hospital owners collective members about yep. it um the landscape the hospitality landscape is going to be forever changed there are going to be some long-term players yep. multi-generational family businesses that are just going to you know, very shortly have to make those difficult decisions. And, you know, I have conversations with them and they're like, ah, oh, you know, I think next week I have to fire my 30 staff. I think, you know, yeah. and it's awful. And yet one of the things that I'm not hearing a lot of is um, where is the tailored mental health support for industries that are restricted? So where is the tailored mental health support for the tourism yeah. sector or for the music sector or... You know, yeah. but but in all of that, mm. I've also, um, I mean, that's the the, the sad, yeah, the is, negative side of it. But there's, yeah. I, I, um, I've connected through Facebook, you know, uh, the cheese, uh, cheese, uh, man, uh, he uh, produces cheese, uh, cheese, uh, cheesecakes, yeah, yeah, and he's super busy, yeah, because he, everyone's he's, at home and he's, he's changed his business model, mm-hmm. he's adapted, and he's created, um, you know, he's adapted to the circumstances, yeah. right? So he might have reduced his staff, mm-hmm. but he's still providing, you a know, service, a, a yeah. service and, and tapping into a need. So there's always going to be... It's so always, is it just the law of attrition then? Like, is it just the natural law of in business, you know, that you're either, you either thrive and survive? Oh, sorry, th- yeah. thrive or survive or die. And that's just you know, life. Well, I mean, if we look at business stats, you know, mm. uh, uh, the business failure rate for business in the first three years is is horrendous, regardless mm. of pandemics or, or not. Well, and even coming up to the first five years, like I'm fascinated by, and I, I kind of, I think that the five-year thing, I think, comes down to apathy, I'll be honest. I was yeah. having this conversation with someone this morning. Um, apathy is part of the human condition, but Jesus in business, it can like kill you pretty quickly yeah um what are some of the you know tips and tricks that you have for business owners when it comes to looking at your business with fresh eyes and and navigating away from that apathy of we've always done it that way this is just what we do you know really Uh, common responses uh, yeah yeah. and that phrase is we've always done it that way Mm -hmm. is the sure way of making your business not grow, not be profitable, not looking for opportunities. I think the first key thing is mindset. Yeah. You've got to have a mindset of having that mindset of that continuous improvement, right, mm-hmm. where you don't have the, the phrase, we've always done it this way. Okay, how can we do it better? Yeah. Because it, throughout my career working for Fortune 500 companies and being involved in helping small business, mm-hmm. that everything can be improved. Always, yeah. And it's the the 5 10% 
Mm. efficiency gains that you have in reviewing your processes that especially if they're compounded can yeah. can make your life less stressful mm -hmm. create more revenue yes. and also um, allow you to actually enjoy uh, the freedom of time which mm. a lot of successful business owners uh, struggle with you yeah. know that that you know working uh, excessive long hours so the key thing is mindset mm -hmm. and sometimes it does take someone from the outside to look in because um, as as you have helped me with some mm. things, what is obvious to you is not obvious to me. Yeah, yeah. and we and all have versa, we yeah, all so have yeah. different areas of expertise and talent, and sometimes it does take that extra person to ask you, well, why are you doing it like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, why am I doing know. it like that? I've always done it that way. Yeah, you know, and and and, and some and it's all those little things that add up to the big things. Yeah, I think it's the same with people though too. So I've had some staffing changes happening. You know, my general manager put in yep. notice after six years and, you know, I'm very excited for them that they're starting their own business. Yep. Very sad for me. Well, I was sad for 24 hours because that's my rule. You can only sulk for 24 hours and you've got to get on good, with it. Good rule. Um, but, you know, um, it was exciting at the same time because, you know, I sat down with the team and I said, well, just because we have a general manager doesn't mean that that's what we need. Yep. So let's throw all the balls up in the yep. air. What aspects of the business are lacking in terms of people resourcing? What do we actually need? Yep. What aspects of my business do I need to be across and which aspects don't I need to be across, yep. you know, apart from people reporting yep. to me? Um, and it completely reframed the way that we decided to go about it and accessing that human capital, like the smarter yep. people in my business because I never want to be the smartest person. Yep. I'm happy to be the bright, shiny object person. You have smart people around yep. you. Um, but yeah, how often is it the people that get in the way of a business's success? Do you think when you're working with clients? Um, a lot, a lot, <laughs> <laughs> a lot, and, and you know, um, that will never work. Um, no, we don't do it like all those mm. kind of uh, typical uh, mindset phrases. Yeah. Your your go to thing, and that's usually um, you know out of fear. Yeah, um, it, and it can be fear of failure or fear of success. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how many people actually fear success. That's true. Because they're yeah. so used to their current lifestyle. And they have a mental ceiling about how yeah. successful they're allowed uh, to be. What happens if I become really successful? Uh, am I still going to have the same connection? Am I still yeah. going to have the same friends? Mm. Um, new challenges, new dynamics. Yeah. The conscious, unconscious mind works well, in really funny ways. That was like, for me, with social media, a -OK. You know, when we started getting to a point as an agency where I didn't actually know every single client. <laughs> that I hadn't actually taken, you know, an initial sales meeting with every yep. single client and I had to let that go. You know, part of me was like, but that's who we are. This is how we do it. And then I was like, well, no, because that's who Tamara is as well. It's how she does it. That's who this yep. – I've taught them all how to do it the same way. Yeah. And it was like, I'm the roadblock to my success. I'm going to get out the way now. <laughs> and, and and I think that's the – you know, I, I see the, uh, the phrase – business owner and entrepreneur mm -hmm. mixed together. Yeah. Now, an entrepreneur does not necessarily work in their business. Mm, true. They create a business Yeah. and then they go, right, now I've got other people who work for me. Mm. I move out of that business. Yeah. I still control it, yeah. but I don't do the day-to-day. -day. Exactly. And I'm going to create another business somewhere else yeah. because my end goal is to, to have, have lots of them. Lots yeah. of different businesses, right? Mm. So I, I end up working less and earning more. Yeah. And that also it starts with that mindset. Yeah, it, that fundamental. Where do, what do you want to do? Where do you want to be? Where are you now? Mm. And what, you know, where's that gap? And yeah. how are you going to close that gap? Yeah, that's and, and, true. And are you going to bring people from outside to help you close that gap? Mm -hmm. Be you know a great bookkeeper, a great a marketing agency, yeah. a great coach. Mm. You know all that kind of stuff. Or are you going to try to do it all by yourself? Now, if you're going to do it all by yourself, it's mm. you Not might get, get there, but it's going to be it's going to be hard. Well, you're going to work long hours yep. if you do it that way, absolutely. And, and your proof and testament mm. of that mindset where you have different businesses, mm -hmm. um, you structure them. I, I can imagine that you're in control of all of them, but you don't necessarily have to be um, in, in, them. Yeah. in the engine room yeah. uh, knowing exactly what goes on, right? No. You're the captain of the ship. Yeah. You're controlling it. You know exactly where the ship is going, yeah. you know, navigating the, uh, the trouble waters, the calm yeah. waters, but you're in control. Well, and I often say, you know, like what, that um, a good business owner, or a smart business person, yeah. um, sees the potholes in the road and steers the car around them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you're down here 
like looking <laughs> looking in the car you're not seeing the potholes coming so it's, you've uh, got to be able to take your head up absolutely and it's the classic you know the difference between uh, working in and working on your business yeah. now i see so many business owners and my parents were a classic example where they spend most of their time working in, in the business mm. where extremely long hours mm. where the magic happens when you work on your business yeah Absolutely. When you start, you know, looking at, you know, why are you doing things, mm. you know, where can I find those extra pot of gold, yeah. you know, the, the extra uh, revenue, uh, how can yeah. I make f- less stress, less mm. overwhelm, how can I make things easier for myself, you know, is is the, is the is now the time to bring other staff members into the mix, yeah. is it the time for growth? And I think that's a really good spot to end on is at the end of the day, you really need to look up from your business. If you're struggling to look up from your business then you can find Mark. All of his contact details are going to be in the show notes on the podcast. Reach out to him. He can talk to you anywhere in the country. It's the beauty of Zoom. Mark, thanks very much for joining. My pleasure. Thank you so much for your opportunity to have a chat. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Seriously Social. Check our website for the latest news, show notes, and for details of Simone's latest book, Confident Networker. Explore the About tab at socialmediaaok.com.au.